I wanted to uh, mention just again quickly, and I'd, I'd referenced uh, the folks at Last Stand Survival Shop at 18 Butte Drive in Jerome. And uh, I'm really, really trying to get this message across because, you know, if we are truly going the direction of the Roman Empire, you're going to be on your own in just a few short years. And if that's the case, how are you going to get by? You've got to defend yourself, your family, your property. And what are you going to eat if the trucks don't come to the grocery store? Well, they have ways to teach you a lot of different skills, survival skills, if you drop by the shop. And again, 18 View Drive. And I wanted to point out, too, if you go do a quick Google search and you do Last Stand Survival Shop, you'll see the website. They claim it's under uh, construction. But my perspective is there's already a lot of really neat stuff there that's uh, visible. And you should take a look at it if you get a chance. And it'll start giving you some ideas, too, as well. 834, Steve Millington in the studio with us with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. And of course, Steve is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Uh, I haven't seen you in a week. That's a long stretch. So usually I see you sometimes around town in between. Yeah, well, we, uh... let, me, let, me, let, me, let me make sure, Steve, that we've actually got your mic on because people will again accuse me of trying to silence you. I've had that happen before. <laughs> Uh, I invite him in just there, for that reason. There's a great many people who would really appreciate it if you could silence me. <laughs> and, and well, I won't give you any names. <laughs> there's a bunch of them out there that you know. Why don't you turn him off? Yeah, we were talking off air about uh, this Clinton situation, and you know, if you're a Republican, the frustration level is is that you realize what she's doing. We were talking about how it's far worse than anything. Nixon was involved in a cover up. That's what got him in trouble. This is a woman who is trying to sell the White House to the highest bidder. And, and, and she's not the least bit bashful about how she goes about doing it. it it's almost like it's a, a blatant disregard of, of all previous protocols or, or uh, ethics or uh, even legalities. She just does it. Um, this morning they were talking about this uh, crown prince from Bahrain, I think it was, um, sent the Clinton Foundation... Thirty million bucks, I think it was. Yeah, uh, he yeah. he tried he tried to make appointments um, through the uh, government channels to get in to see the Secretary of State to discuss some issues. Couldn't get it done, so he backed up and went through the Clinton Foundation and the uh, administrator there, uh, Huma Abedin. Abedin, that's it. Thank you. Um, got him a first-class ticket right to the Secretary of State. Now, give me a break, people. How in the world does that work? That's pay for play. And, and then if, if elected president, all of these people are going oh to come my. back to her and they're going to say, look, Remember we did when? a favor for you. It's like selling your soul to the devil. That's right. It never goes away. And, and uh, you know, she, yesterday she was uh, um, just... oh. My emails are so boring. There's absolutely nothing in there. You'd just be wasting your time to just, let's talk about something interesting. Well, wait a minute. Um, maybe those things are interesting. Maybe they were boring to you, but the rest of us would like a chance to take a look at those things and see just exactly what it is you've got out there that were so meaningless. So, oh, you don't need to look at this. There's nothing here. And move. Let's move on. Nothing Nothing here, people. And, it. you know, at some point in time... it. Never before in history has a candidate for president had so many question marks behind their name. None of them have ever been questioned or, or, or investigated by the FBI. It doesn't happen. And yet she's going through these things right and left and right and left like, oh, gee, there's nothing to it. Six months ago, I heard that if Trump happened to be the nominee for the Republicans, that they would dig up all of his past relationships with mobsters because he would have had to work with them as a developer in New York and New Jersey. And yet we've seen nothing. Not yet. Not yet. And, and, yet and, and on, perhaps we never will. But on Hillary Clinton's case, it's also obvious. Uh, and, and yet you can't get any traction with media and uh, other fellow Isn't travelers. Isn't that interesting? Absolutely no comment of any kind from the media about all of these things piling up what has she got on them, or what do they have on her? They prefer her over Trump. I think that's the key. I, that, and I think that's the important thing. we got about a minute before the break. I'm going to squeeze in a caller. We may have to answer any questions on the other side, but you're up next on KLIX. Good morning. Good, mor good morning, guys. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to seem like we're picking on one person, but the uh, this whole thing is 
out of hand. And I think it's because of the digital age and everything else. Just, you can't get rid of stuff once it's out there. And it's funny how it's not only the teenagers can't figure that out, it's people in office. And this has been going on for eons. She is not the first, will not be the last. The, the down decline of our country all leads back to the dollar. The pursuit of the money and selling off uh, relationships or whatever is, is what's caused the problems. And it's the greed, the greed, the greed. And she's being caught at it because it's all digitized. I want to thank you for the call. <laughs> thank we'll get you. back to this topic and some others in just a couple of minutes. And I guess you can't serve two masters. No, you can't. Uh, Not yet. Uh, Nobody's figured that one out. <laughs> We've got more with Steve Millington on the way. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Going to talk about some news coming out of the state legislature uh, as well in the next uh, 20 minutes. Also, a big event coming up with the local Republican Party at the Twin Falls County Fair. Details on that. Joining us in the studio today, Steve Millington. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Telephone number to reach our program today, 736 0300. Right now, our temperature has been ping ponging around a bit, I guess, on the breeze. It's 60. Now, the high, it says, is going to be 65 today on my gauge here, but that's not true. I, in the upper 70s before the day is over with. And just a, another quick reminder about my friends at the last stand survival shop, Jerome, Idaho. They're located at 18 Butte Drive. Happened to be there the other day, and when I was doing my walkthrough, I was just looking around, felt like a kid in a candy shop when I was looking at some of the firearms that they have available. But, in fact, even vests, so you can have some protection too as well. But I was looking around at some of the other goods they have, and they're doing a good job of promoting the notion that you've got to be able to have at least a pantry, if not a basement, filled with uh, with something to eat in case you have a long-term period where you can't go to a grocery store. So I would recommend, if you get the chance, they had the grand opening on Saturday if you missed it, do drop in and see them because they have a lot of great specials going on all this week. It's coming up on 845, and I believe, Steve, we have another telephone caller looking to get in touch with us. Good. So we'll go back to the telephones. <laughs> caller, you're on the air on KLIX. Good morning. Hey, Steve, uh, you want to verify something? Yesterday I had a good laugh. When, is this uh, Bill Clinton getting a, a firm call, Lewinsky? And, I, and all, there's an enabler, but two... Republican get investigated for having a criminal affair. Oh, that's just a mistake. Why don't we call a state a state? What's good for the goose is also good for the candor. Well, of course, now so, Bill Clinton's uh, crime was actually yeah, yeah, lying yeah, to investigators. It wasn't the sex. Yeah. But you know that that probably if you were if you weren't living in the country at the time, you wouldn't know that. But thank you for the call. You bet. Speaking of that, we were talking off air ourselves about what's going on here with Representative Perry and uh, Senator. Uh, Grim, I guess it is, right? Uh, or, or rather... Uh, That's not quite the right name. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we, we'll find the name. He's uh, pretty grim as it is. We'll just put it that way. Um, um, gee whiz, why can't I but, think but of his name? But the I, fact of the matter is, they haven't... There's that The Republicans, of all people, have actually asked for an investigation to see if any government money was spent here. However, that's correct. a that, newspaper already did an investigation and said, doesn't appear that that happened. Yeah, that's uh, the, the, the uh, <laughs> public investigation said that uh, they they could not find any improprieties or uh, uh, mis ex expenditures that they were reimbursed for so if they had their little uh, uh, get togethers it was uh, they did that out of their own pocket they didn't build the state for it um, which is a good thing the the, 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 the issue is uh, you know uh, ethically, we don't really want to have those kinds of people representing us in, and, and maybe we have a double standard, but you know, at, at that level, we have a, a state senator and a state representative. The state senator is from Income. Man, oh man, I'm just, I apologize. I can't right, remember his name. Right. Anyway, um, what the heck were they thinking about? Number one. And, and she has gone public and said, okay, I, I had a, a, a severe, uh, personal trauma, and and I made a mistake, and and my husband and I have gone back to counseling, and we are working through this thing, and we're trying, and, and all of this public exposure 
doesn't help one bit. Well, yes, it. she's correct. It doesn't help one bit, and it's really a sad situation um, for, for that kind of stuff to happen. Um, you know, go home and, and, and figure it out. Fix your own situation. Never mind this, you know, trying to drive down the detour and, and get to where you want to be. That doesn't very, it, it, actually, it never works. So now what do we look at? Do the uh, um, various uh, oversight bodies say to themselves, wait a minute, you just need to resign. I said Grimm. His name is Guthrie. Guthrie, that's it. Yeah, Jim, right. is it yeah. Jim Guthrie? Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, get out of the legislature, go home, fix whatever problems you had at home, and, and just go start over somewhere else. But but get out of the legislature. And, and there are several issues that will uh, dog them for a, an extended period of time. How effective can they be in a legislative uh, leadership capacity with this kind of baggage hanging on behind them? And, and, and so often we don't think about, you know, how much baggage am I dragging? Uh, you know, can, what can I do to get rid of it? Um, I always used to think that it would be a wonderful thing if we could just write all of our personal indiscretions and baggage, if you will, and, and, and wad them up on a piece of paper and put them in a, in a paper sack with a rock and throw them off the Perrine Bridge. Now, don't do that because the fish and game people and so forth are going to get real ugly with you for polluting. In the river. But, but you know, just speaking, we, we want them up on a piece of paper, and we put them in a, a bag with a big rock, and we drop it off the Perrine Bridge, and we never see them again. They go away. They leave us. Well, that's a difficult process to get completed, but it, it just is kind of representative of what we have to do with those things Put them in a bag with a big rock, toss them off the bridge, and don't ever go back. Get away from it. Move on with your life. Go forward. Um, you know, it, it, it's a process of, uh, of, of uh, I don't want to get religious on anybody, but, you know, we, we call that repentance. We just walk away from the issue, and we never go back. Well, put it on a piece of paper and wad it up and put it in a, plastic, or a, a paper sack with a rock and throw it off the bridge. And it'll sink to the bottom, and you don't have to face it again. And and uh, so I look at this, and I say to myself, wow, I am really glad that that is not a, quote, Twin Falls County situation, because <laughs> it would be... Now, and, and, and basically, Twin Falls County leadership does not have a direct line with that. There is a legislative district leadership. So the, 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 the legislative district from which they uh, are, have been elected, could just have a meeting and just say, we have a, a vote of no confidence. And then you'd have to find a candidate. Can you find a candidate this late? Um, I don't know what the state law stipulates, but the, the, if they resign, then that, that legislative district, the, the uh, uh, precinct committee persons comprising that legislative district would meet within, a, I think it's a maximum of 15 days, and they would select three names to uh, to present to the governor, and he would appoint someone to number one, fill the remainder of their term, and I think he could also, uh, 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 by, by making the appointment, get their names onto the ballot. But we're pushing the envelope on getting names on ballots because they're going to have to start printing ballots. I don't know, maybe the first of October, so they've got ballots printed and distributed through uh, available in, in all of the po polling places. So this is going to be an interesting little, yeah. real interesting. And, and and in the case of his wife, I mean, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. That's oh, where yeah. all this got started. We have a caller with us. Uh, you're on the air with Steve Millington and Bill Colley at 851. I've got a couple of quick questions, and then I'd like to hear your comment on them. Uh, everybody knows, of course, the Democratic Party is monopolizing the uh, media, and it's hard to get information to the rest of us out here. So first question is, of course, is who, a two-part question, who can actually charge Hillary with a crime? Is it a State Department, Justice Department? Is there an individual who is responsible? Who can do this and why they're not doing it? Now, Number one, I can answer that question. Uh, if, if there is a special prosecutor that comes along, it could be, it could be the Justice Department itself, yes. 
But if there's a special prosecutor which would be named, then they would make a recommendation at the end to the Justice Department, and it would work that way. Now, the second part, of course, America should be scared to death. When you think the FBI isn't doing anything and any of the Justice Department or any of them can prove anything, America should be scared to death of what's coming down the pike. Second question is, why doesn't Trump buy TV time? If he said what we are listening on the radio to you guys about Hillary, I think he ought to win with a landslide, but the people aren't getting the message. Well, that question about him loosening his pockets, uh, uh, his purse strings, is probably one that's been around for a while now. I, I think, uh, and, and, and we, we have talked about this previously uh, in, in various uh, sessions, um, let's get past Labor Day. Uh, it's, we have been in a, a uh, battle, campaign battle, for 15 or 18 months already. And, and we had uh, debates. So many of them, we've lost track. But I think when you get past Labor Day, that is typically the beginning of the heavy campaign season. Now, in, in some of the uh, uh, battleground states, those states which flip back and forth between red and blue, uh, you're already seeing a lot of, of Trump TV uh, advertisement campaign uh, pushes. And, and I think you're going to see a lot more of that beginning right after the Labor Day weekend. We start moving into September, and, and we're going to see much, much more TV advertising. To our caller's point, I think that uh, don't wait too much longer because there are an awful lot of people who would be well benefited to hear all of these things as fast as possible. And there's only so much time available, too. You've got to buy it early. Uh, to reserve it. That's right. You, you can't just walk in and say, I want to buy these three cans of stuff off the shelf t right now. You have got to go in and schedule blocks of time, and, and uh, they will hold a commitment for you at right on the before the news or right in the middle of this TV show or this real popular event or, or uh, Saturday afternoon uh, college football or whatever. But you got to start buying those blocks of time now in order to get them uh, – secured. And besides which, uh, if you show up at the last minute, they'll be more than glad to put you on the air. However, it's going to cost you quite a bit more money. So you got to plan ahead. And, and I think part of the, everybody says, oh, Trump's campaign's in disarray. We've had to shake it up. I think part of the shakeup is that we've got people in there now who are a little bit more accomplished as far as campaign uh, uh, outline and, and procedure, structure. Is concerned. Uh, Paul Rappaport uh, had an important role in the in the primary election, but that's a different ball game than where we are now. Now we've got to get grassroots going. We've got to get uh, TV uh, uh, advertising going. We've got to get. Um, here's just a, 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 an aside, a, a frustration from my standpoint. People are calling me saying, "Where can I get yard signs?" Trump, Pence. Yard yes. signs. A friend of mine is making his own. Um, they contacted me last week, and they said, we expect to have them um, the, the first of next week, or like on Monday and Tuesday of next week. And I said, you're pushing the cotton pick an envelope here. I need mine right now because we have a booth at the fair, and I want to have Trump signs in that booth. We've got so, a quick quick minute to go. Can we get a caller in? Yeah, let's take them. Don't listen to me. Call her. I'm sorry. I stepped on your toes. Go ahead. Oh, good morning, guys. Uh, you know, this thing with the extramarital affair, this is a close thing right here in the state. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's not solved, and there's a problem with it, but the people are on it, and they're taking care of it. It'll be taken care of. It's the same thing with uh, Butch Otter. He didn't want to pass a constitutional carry, but he's right here among the people. He, he did the right thing. With the wicked witch of the West, she's up there in Washington, D.C., and nobody can do anything about it. You know, and my point is that once Trump gets in office, and I believe he will, he should dissolve the federal, uh, the uh, BLM, the National uh, Forest Service, the federal uh, How about EPA? Uh, Fish and Wildlife, 
education. And you go in back to the states and let the states take care of this stuff, and most of our problems will be cured. I want to thank you for the call. It's that's a great a, point. That's a great point. And, and frankly, uh, the, the uh, 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 Article 10 of the Bill of Rights, those items not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved for the states. And I think our caller has, has picked up on that point really spot on. Got about a minute before we, well, we'll actually have some fade music here uh, on the way out, but we are going to be doing a show live September 2nd, Friday. Yep, Friday night at from the uh, uh, Republican, fair, uh, Rep- Republican booth, oh, brother, at the fair <laughs> between 5 and 7 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to be doing live broadcasts on KLIX, and we have already got commitments from many of our state officers who plan to be at the booth so that they can can uh, broadcast their uh, message live. Um, we know that uh, Crapo has scheduled his time. Simpson is not committed but has scheduled it. Um, we have got uh, Brad Little. We have got several, and all of our local people, the, the guys running for county offices, um, all of our legislators, they all plan to be in attendance between 5 and 7 on Friday night, September 2nd, at the Republican booth at the Twin Falls County Fair. And we'll see you in about a week. Steve yes. Thank we'll you. be back. Thank you.